part of the job description was you will be part of a team that protects free speech online, mm. which makes it seem very heroic. It felt like you were putting on a cape, working at Google. Over the past year, I've been reporting on the lives of Facebook's content moderators in America, and they've told me about their low pay, their dire working conditions, and in some cases, the long-term mental health consequences of doing the work that they do. A content moderator is kind of like a police officer for the internet. If you ever see something that you think doesn't belong on a site and you report it, that report is gonna be reviewed by a human being. And while a lot of what they see is really benign, like spam, for example, some of it's really disturbing. I'm talking about murder, terrorism, and child exploitation. Recently, I started seeking out people who did this kind of work for Google and YouTube. I wanted to see how their experiences compared to the ones I'd heard about already. And what I did learn surprised me. Part of you know doing our job and how they would make us kind of feel better about it was that you know you guys see this so other people don't have to see this right over the course of my reporting i talked to both people who worked at google full-time and people who had been hired on through third-party contractors it became clear to me that no matter who hired you doing this job over a long enough time period can cause significant mental health consequences but it also became clear to me that there is a big difference in how google employees get treated and how those third-party contractors get treated Today, a former full-time Google employee named Daisy Soderberg-Rivkin is going on the record to talk about her experiences as a content moderator. She had access to all the perks and all the benefits that come with being a full-time Google employee. But at the end of the day, that didn't save her from the consequences of doing the job. I was a legal root removals associate, which is a very fancy way of saying I was a content moderator <laughs> at Google. Let's talk about what the job actually was. You show up, you have your orientation, you sit down at your computer, it's time to do your job. What is your job? So you usually start your work by going through a queue. So you're assigned to a queue based on either an issue area or a geographic area. So I focused on the French market because my first languages were French and English. And I also worked on our child sexual abuse imagery cases and our terrorism cases. And you we're working primarily on web search, right? Yes. We, as in-house content moderators, we would uh, usually handle more high-level complex issues. So certain things that were very high volume, such as uh, defamation and copyright, were typically sent over to contractors. They would then escalate to us if it was kind of a gray area. And if it was even a gray area for us, we would then escalate to our council. So it was kind of levels of, um, of how specialized we were. At what point did you start to feel like you were seeing more disturbing stuff than you expected? Very early on, they said we would be analyzing child sexual abuse imagery, but I remember very clearly in parentheses, it said uh, this kind of content would be limited to one to two hours per week. And in reality, we were understaffed. So we would be in there sometimes five, six hours a week, which is, it sounds like nothing, but it's actually. Oh, it sounds like a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. W when did you first notice that doing this job was starting to affect your mental health? When I was um, walking around San Francisco, actually, and I was with one of my friends, and we saw a group of kids toddlers that were hanging on to one of those ropes so that they don't go far. I looked at them and then I kind of blinked once and suddenly I just had a flash of images of some of the images I had seen. Children being tied up, um, children being raped at that age. You know, this is three, three years old. I, I kind of like stopped and I was kind of blinking a lot and my friend had to make sure I was okay and I had to sit down for a second and I just exploded crying. She was like, what just happened? And I couldn't explain it to her and I, um, just these racing thoughts um, and then an instant panic attack. I was having nightmares, I wasn't sleeping. Um, I had spent 
multiple days just crying in the bathroom. And, you know, I was having all of these panic attacks and my work productivity just dipped. And finally, you know, my manager was like, listen, we really need you to step up your productivity game. And I just snapped and I turned to him and I said, do you understand what, what we're looking at? And we're not machines, we're humans. So we have emotions and those emotions are deeply scarred by looking at children being raped all the time and people getting their heads chopped off. It was like there was no escape. And uh, yeah, I finally snapped and they took that as, oh, she needs to take a second. She needs to breathe. And I said, no, I need to leave. The, the free food, the nap pods, all these benefits, this doesn't mean anything if this is, if this is my day to day. Daisy helped me understand how hard this job is to do even when you work in the greatest office in the world. But the truth is that most people don't work in an office half that nice. One of Google's biggest projects that it has to moderate, of course, is YouTube. And when it comes to YouTube, Google has decided to give most of the work of content moderation to third party contractors. Recently, I went to Austin, Texas to meet with a group of moderators who work for Accenture on the YouTube project. Project. Specifically, they work on what is called the VEQ, VE standing for Violent Extremism. 120 times a day, they review YouTube videos that have terrorism, graphic violence, and other disturbing content. You're about to hear from one of them, and we've altered the audio to protect their identity. So at the end, they told you to watch some videos. I can take some actions to avoid YouTube policies. But you don't feel how this is going to impact you. In some ways, the content moderators who do this work for Google and YouTube are treated better than the ones who work for Facebook. Most prominently, they get two hours of break time each day, basically two hours of paid leave in which they can recover from the challenges of doing this work. But most of them aren't able to take a full two hours a day. They force me or information to have to be sitting only this time or the air, and if you don't, there is going to be a bunch of schedules will be changed, or uh, you will be unchecked, and this is going to affect my mood's life. I will be take my three hours. What, what kind of uh, what kind of things do they do that make life hard? They always have complaints about everyone, you know, like, I have something on you. If you make any problems, you know what, this is the reason that I can't fire you. Right, right. One of the things that they all say is for we miss our agents to work with you across the end. So they're constantly reminding you how easily you can be replaced. Yes, but now that the feel stuck somewhere. They can't leave the work because they have responsibilities. We have bills right now we have to pay. So it sounds like people feel kind of trapped. We are. Yeah, that's, that's a good word. When I brought all this to Google, the company told me that it takes the health of its workers very seriously and pointed out that it offers on-site counseling to both its full-time employees and to its contractors. I think it's worth pointing out, though, that even though Daisy had access to that on-site counseling, the counselor she had ultimately told her to go seek outside help and get a therapist. Daisy also eventually took medical leave and ultimately got an emotional support animal to help her. It's a dog named Stella. Look, high five. I found a psychiatrist and I found a therapist. The psychiatrist put me on antidepressants. I was diagnosed with chronic anxiety and PTSD. And then I started seeing a therapist just to talk through these things. And she said, is legal removals associate anything close to a content moderator? And I said, it is a content moderator. And she said, trust me when I say you are not the first person that I've seen mm. with this particular issue. It seems like recovering from doing this job has itself been a full-time job. Oh yeah. Whenever someone talks to me about content moderation, I say, I'm a recovering content moderator. Like, oh, you talk about it like it's it's like alcoholism. And I said, well, <laughs> you never fully recover. 
One of the things that is so interesting to me about your story is that you are one of the very few people I've talked to who did content moderation as a full-time employee of a company rather than a contractor. You had access to six months of paid medical leave. A contractor who's like moderating for YouTube in Austin doesn't have that same access. I had those those months to think about my choices and to think about ways out without having to deal with unemployment or having to deal with, you know, how am I going to pay rent? Um, and I know those contractors don't have that opportunity. The, the contractors I've talked with in Austin are making 18, 15 an hour, about $37,000 a year. Does that seem like a, a high enough wage given some of the risks involved? Absolutely not. Um, there's never going to be enough money to make this okay. Let's, I'm going to be clear about that. But I think that you need to pay contractors proportional to what they're going through, the impact of their work, because this is so vital to the business. Let's put a fine point on it. Google can't exist without the work that you did, right? Like you were responding to official legal requests from governments yep. that would have otherwise shut Google down in their country yep. if you didn't respond. Exactly. So this is very high stakes work. Mm -hmm. And yet for some reason, these companies have just chosen not to value it. Yeah, I think that contractors are so essential, especially considering how much volume we have. We need as many people as we can doing this work. But we also need to change the overall system and the overall structure of how this work is being done, how we support these people, how we give them tools and resources to deal with these things or else these problems are only going to get worse. Hey, thanks for watching and don't leave any comments. It will only create more work for the content moderators. But if you want to know more about what's going on with our wayward tech platforms, I write a daily newsletter called The Interface about the collision between big social networks and democracy. You can find it and subscribe for free at theverge.com slash interface.